Hey YouTubers, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we form up a mobile home slab. This is part one of a part two series. Part two will show you how we, how we pour the concrete, so make sure you come on back for that. Hey, so before I get started, I just wanna say there's a vast majority of you guys that watch these videos that aren't subscribed to the channel yet. If you guys, if you guys like concrete, if you like learning about concrete, um, please subscribe to the channel. My channel is all about forming, pouring, and finishing concrete stuff. So subs hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. I come up with a couple videos a week. Now what we're doing here is we're laying out the forms for this, for this big mobile home. This is a double wide mobile home slab. It's about 58 by 28 is the size of the slab. And eventually what they're going to do is they're going to move the mobile home and set it right on top of this, this slab. So we had to give them a base. And in Maine, where we're from, the code enforcement requires just a six inch slab under these mobile homes. And then everything else, everything else around that is, uh, is done afterwards. So what we're doing, I, I was just hired here to do the slab. I didn't do the gravel work. So another contractor came in here and he prepped the sub base and he, what he did was he dug out about a couple feet of, of whatever type of soil was there and then put in this gravel and compacted it and leveled it. So we'll check and see just how level he got it here a little bit later in the video. You're going to see it might surprise you. It looks pretty level by eye, but we'll see just how level he got it here when we set these forms to grade. So what we do normally is we'll lay the forms out and we want to make sure the lengths, each length of these four sides are a little bit longer than what our slab size is going to be. We, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll measure these out and mark them with a pencil and get the corners all screwed together. But if they're not long enough, then we got to add to it. So we just want to make sure they're a little bit longer than our, our uh, slab size and then that makes our job a lot easier. So we're getting, we got two by sixes we're using here today. And then I'm using these short pieces just to screw the, the sides all together, make it one piece. And I like using screws. I like using deck screws to fasten stuff. I know a lot of guys will use uh, double headed 16D nails. And I used to do, I used to use those two years ago, but we just found it's, for us, it's a little quicker to, to get the forms put together and then when we come back after the slabs dry to strip the forms it's a little quicker to strip them and then we can reuse the screws over and over again so I'm gonna just go down the line and get everything screwed together we use about a two foot piece to get everything screwed together that gets it makes them nice and rigid when we're all done and then we'll get these forms tilted up and I'll measure out the sides and get the first corner screwed and then we'll go from there all the way around to get all the remaining three of them done. How many of you guys where you live do you do, you do mobile home slabs or do you do slabs under your mobile homes like this or do you just set them right on the ground? Um, like I said in Maine the code requires that they be on a slab and then a lot of times they'll require these hurricane tie downs in the slab to keep the mobile home in place if we have really high winds. So let me know down in the comments what state you're from and if if you know or if you do you live in a mobile home and is there a slab under it. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting my 58 foot mark measured out and then I'll mark that with a pencil. Then I can get that corner that first corner screwed together right where I need it and then move down the 28 foot side and continue along all the way around. And you can see right there the, t the height of those two boards right there there's a little difference in the in the gravel grade already. Either that corner of the gravel is a little bit low or there's a hump in the middle of that that form there on the left that we'll have to deal with when we set the forms to grade. And you can see we got these metal pins. You can kind of see them laying on the ground. We're going to use those metal pins to, to hold the forms in place. And we, those have holes in them so we can screw right through them. I'll have a link for some of those down in the description. As well as all these other tools we're using here. The laser level. 
you know, the drill driver and all that stuff we use in our work will be down in those down in the description below, guys, if you want to check them out. Now, my company, my company here in Maine is Days Concrete Floors. And like I said, we specialize in all types of concrete flat work. If you want to learn how to do slabs like this, how to do flat work like we do, I've got a, I've got a training academy called the Concrete Underground. And the link for that is down in the description too, guys. So if you want to learn how to do concrete work just like we do, I've got, I've got a couple hundred videos out on YouTube about stuff we do. But in the Concrete Underground, I go into greater detail. There's more training in there, more advanced training on pouring and finishing concrete, on stamping concrete, on epoxy floors, on all kinds of different aspects of, of running a concrete business. So that's the place to be if you want to get real, real serious about doing concrete work, guys. So what we're doing is we're just, we're getting everything laid out, getting it put in place. You can see that pipe sticking up in the middle. That's for the septic. So we got to make sure the slab is positioned in the right spot. So when they set the home on it, the septic is right over that pipe. So we got that all measured out and then we went corner to corner diagonal to get the slab nice and square. And now we, what we can do is finish putting these metal pins in to hold all the forms. Now we got a string run around, although you, it's hard to see right here in the video, but there is a string on top of that form that's, that goes all the way around that we use to keep the board straight with. And we'll leave that string right there so we can make sure the board stays straight when we pour also. We're pounding these in just so they're solid. They don't have to be perfectly straight up and down. They just need to be in there good and solid. Make sure they're holding the form. And they don't need to be pounded down below the form either. It does make it a little easier when you screed the concrete if they're below the form. But it doesn't, for us, because we do it every day, it doesn't really matter to us one way or the other. You can see how I'm making sure those are nice and just nice and tight just to where I get them to their to they're going to be firm in the ground. The ground was pretty solid here. Like I said, he put in about a couple feet of gravel and then they rolled it and then they compacted it. So it was pretty firm. Now I'm going around and checking his his uh, dirt grade level. And I want to see just how level he got that because I got to put six inches of concrete, at least an average of six inches of concrete in here. So, you know, I, it's okay if I have five and a half inches in one spot and six and a half in another, you know, and then six in another, just as long as I average about six inches, that's going to be plenty strong enough to hold the mobile home. So once I get that average of the dirt, then I can then I can adjust my receiver on my grade stick down six inches to get my top of form for the slab. And as you can see in that corner, the gravel was quite low. So the top of that form right now is set to finish grade. And I got about two and a half inches of space under it. So I got about eight inches of concrete that's gonna go there. So he didn't do a very good job grading that part of the slab. Now you can see as I as I lift the form to grade, T is screwing it to grade through that metal stake to hold it. And that part there is about six inches thick. You can see there's going to be about a half inch gap under the form if we're at six inches. And that's perfectly fine. We'll just come back later and we'll backfill. We'll pull some of that gravel up against the back of the form to backfill it and hold the concrete from going out from under it. And we're going to use some wire mesh in this for reinforcement. So I got these five by 10 foot sheets of wire mesh we're putting down. Those things are about eight bucks a sheet where we buy them. So they're, it's relatively inexpensive reinforcement. And we're, going, we're laying it right on the ground right now, but when we pour the concrete, we'll pull it up into the concrete. So it'll, it'll help reinforce. Basically what wire mesh does is it doesn't strengthen the concrete. Like I'm going to order 3000 PSI concrete for this. It's not going to make the concrete 3500 PSI by having the wire in it. All that wire is going to do is if the concrete cracks, which it's probably going to crack, that wire will just help hold that crack together tighter. 
help keep it from separating or lifting. But it doesn't strengthen the concrete. It doesn't add PSI to the concrete. So when when we say it's reinforcement, it's just to help hold the slab together if it cracks. And the same with the rebar. We're putting a double row of rebar around the outside edge. And that's just to help strengthen or or beef up the edge a little bit in case in case it does crack we don't want that concrete to lift separate or settle which it shouldn't the gravel pad was compacted pretty hard which is really the most important thing under the concrete is that have a good hard pack gravel pad and then you shouldn't really have to worry about your concrete moving so we'll get all this wire mesh put in we got the rebar laid out around the outside and what we do is when we pour the concrete we wet set that we just drop that in the wet concrete and push it down a couple inches that way we know it's not not on the bottom I got this one one strip here on this edge I got to cut these sheets of wire in half and I got bolt cutters that I use to do that although I'm, I'm cutting it off to the side on the trailer I had all this wire on my trailer so we'll drop in those sheets of uh, two foot sheets to finish that one edge and then we'll be ready to pour and that'll be in part two of the video which will be coming out next after this one so my videos come out on on uh, Mondays and Fridays guys so if you want to check them out you can go back and check these out and again check out the concrete underground if you want to learn how to do this like a like a like a pro like we do then that's all in the concrete underground guys and again thanks for watching come on back hit the like button if you like these videos and we'll see you on the next one